do I need to vacuum degas my low viscosity platinum silicone? Now, there's a lot of these new platinum silicones on the market, these low viscosity formulas that uh, many times they're advertised as self de airing. And I get this question a lot about do I need to degas these formulas or am I good to do just like it says and just pour it without vacuum degassing? So, this is one of those questions that came up enough that I thought it deserved a video. Now, what I did for this tutorial is I actually made two different molds to illustrate the answer because the answer is a little bit nuanced and a little bit complicated. So let's jump right in. So first off, I made two molds using the same silicone. Now this is a uh, platinum one-to-one -one silicone from BJB. This is uh, TC5110F platinum silicone. This is a soft, stretchy silicone that's ideal for these little one-piece seamless molds like this. And this, of course, is a one-to-one -one low viscosity silicone. And silicones like this, because of that low viscosity, this has about a 2,500 centipoise mixed viscosity. So very low. Where silicone is concerned, that's definitely one of the lowest out there for uh, mixed viscosities, which is why I'm using it for this tutorial. Now, what I did for these two molds is this is a little uh, cat sculpture that I made in a uh, previous tutorial, and I'll link it on the end screen if you're curious about that because I did some other stuff with this for a little clear Christmas ornament. But I molded this little cat twice. So the first mold that I made, I made this with just regular TC5110F. And again, this is a soft, I think this actually measures around a five on the shore A scale. And I just did this as a regular mold with no vacuum degassing, just mixed it up, poured it over my little cat pattern, and this one demolds in about right around an hour. So then I demold my little cat and commence to pouring resin into this. Now, for my second mold, this little blue silicone mold, this one I added a little bit of blue silicone pigment to differentiate it from my other one. And this one, I did vacuum degas. So again, I set up the mold exactly the same, except this time I subjected this to a vacuum and vacuum degassed the silicone before pouring it again over my little cap model. Now, at first glance, these molds look almost identical inside. Uh, both of these molds are bubble free on the surface. But if you look at the undegassed mold, if you look at it really closely, especially if you look at the video where I was pouring this, you can see some of the little micro bubbles inside. Now, those little bubbles on most applications, most just regular resin pours are not going to matter. If we just mix up a regular resin like, say, uh, TC802, which just cures opaque white, and we mix that up, say we mix it up with pigment or whatever, and pour that into our mold and pop that out in 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna wind up with a resin cast that overall uh, looks fine. There's no major issues with that, and for all intents and purposes, that will work great for casting little resin cats out of that mold. Now, where the problem comes is when we subject this mold to pressure, because even a mold like this that is very low viscosity and de-airs on its own, most of those bigger air bubbles, it still traps those little micro bubbles or what we sometimes call champagne bubbles. And even though they're not bubbles present uh, visibly on the surface of the mold that you could actually feel or uh, at room temperature see on a resulting cast, uh, they're there. And when you subject a part to pressure, and these two little cats, I'm gonna use these as an example here. This little cat was cast from my vacuum degassed mold, and this one was cast from the undegassed mold. And what happens is when we pour our resin into the mold, and this is typically when we're casting clear resins. So in this case, I was using Water Clear 786, and that's a, a water clear aliphatic resin formula. And for us to get a really nice, pristine, bubble-free part, we need to subject that to around uh, 40 to 60 PSI. Now, when we subject this mold to pressure, the vacuum degas mold is fine. No issues whatsoever. We wind up with a nice bubble-free part out of that. But where the problems come in is the mold that we did not vacuum degas, even though there's no major bubbles on the surface, we still have those little micro bubbles 
uh, that are all through the silicone that are almost impossible to see, especially a lot of manufacturers will put pigments and things in that so that you don't see those little micro bubbles, but they are there. And when it's subjected to pressure, as you can see with this little guy right here, um, you can see those little bumps. It's almost like if running your finger across, it almost feels like Velcro. Now, just to make it clear here, um, no pun intended here, this, this part was um, clear coated with uh, a clear coat after I demolded the part. And I did some uh, like this that I clear coated as well, but it was harder to see these little bumps, so I didn't want to use those on video here. Now, these can easily be sanded off, those little, uh, little pimple-like bumps all over the part. Those could be sanded off, but that's additional cleanup work. And this is typically where I get the question of, of saying, hey, I bought silicone X, and I'm making these parts and they're otherwise great, but every now and then they come out with these little bumps on it. And a lot of times what's happening is over time, even if you're not casting under pressure, those little bubbles can open up and uh, allow some defects to start showing up in the cast. And this little uh, rubber cast is a good example of that. This is a little F105 uh, polyurethane rubber cast. And you can see that um, the mold was clean when I poured this little guy in there, but he popped out with some of those little bubbles. Um, some of those are, are leftover resin that actually uh, was left over from a previous pour that stayed inside the mold and then came out with this cast. So the long and the short of it is if you are going to be casting under pressure, that is where you really have to vacuum degas. And that's one of the reasons why when I did the uh, matrix mold video the other day, that's one of the benefits to making a matrix mold is you get the benefits of a brush on mold, but you have the ability to vacuum degas the silicone that you're pouring over your part. So overall, for a lot of people just doing regular standard resin pours, solid pours, uh, you may not even notice much of a difference with that but the molds that are not vacuum degassed will start to wear down a little bit faster as some of those little micro bubbles open up. And then most importantly is if you are pressure casting, you definitely want to vacuum degas because as soon as you start subjecting this to pressure repeatedly, you're going to wind up with those little bumps all over the part. And as that mold ages, you're going to get even more of those bubbles opening up because what's happening is those little micro bubbles that don't really matter at room temperature under pressure. So again, we're, we're pressurizing this for the water clear 786. We're doing that between 40 and 60 PSI. So when we subject that to pressure, uh, under pressure, those little micro bubbles, those, uh, pop open up and allow resin to go into those. Now, one other consideration is when you're dealing with really large pores that have a large mass and you're pouring that into a mold that has not been vacuum degassed, is the exotherm from that uh, heat coming off that resin. A lot of these fast urethanes, especially like say TC802 or TC808, those generate a lot of exotherm. And what happens when it generates all that heat is that heats the air inside those little bubbles in the mold, especially if you've got larger air bubbles that weren't vacuum degassed out. Those bubbles expand and push inward. And they may not break, but they'll push in ever so slightly. And then if you look at your part, you'll see all kinds of little dimples on the outside, almost like a little miniature finger was poking the, uh, the part in some places. Not all the time, but it, it has happened to me before. So something to be aware of. So overall, if you are casting pretty basic resin pieces, not a big deal. But those of you that are casting clear resins or really detailed figurines where you really want to make sure that you're getting all that surface detail really well, that's where uh, in order to be able to pressure cast that and get accurate results, that's where vacuum degas, even if you're dealing with a silicone that says, the ad copy says you don't have to vacuum degas. Still a very good idea to vacuum degas. So there you go. I hope you all found that uh, helpful. And I hope that answers the question for those of you asking about this. Because again, this is one of those things that it is a very nuanced thing that is very situation specific. So again, best to always vacuum degas if you can. 
but especially if you know that you're going to be uh, pressure casting clear materials or just pre pressure casting resin in general, always a good idea to vacuum degas. Now, as usual, uh, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And on the end screen here, I'm going to put a, some important resources. Those of you new to platinum silicones, I've got a video here for... Uh, uh, testing for cure inhibition, so be sure to check that out, as well as this video about vacuum degassing. Real important information there. And also this video about uh, five top resin problems. So those of you casting polyurethane resin and uh, curious about troubleshooting common resin problems, be sure to check that video out as well. So thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.